I think we will go ahead and get started. I want to welcome all of you around the world to another exciting webinar for our Shiny Developer Series in partnership with our studio. It is my pleasure to be joined as usual by our studio's community manager, Curtis Kephart. And we are extremely excited to be talking with David Grangen about some of his work with the R interface suite of packages and his takes on the best practices with design of Shiny applications. Um, before we turn it over to David, I wanna mention right off the top that um, all the webinars that we've been doing in this series are recorded and you can find those recordings at shinydevseries.com. And I also want to highlight the excellent post that Curtis wrote earlier this week that really frames our intent and purpose of the Shiny Developer Series. It also has great links to the past episodes and where we're going in the future. And one thing I want to mention is that we have been trying our best to strategically structure the series of these webinars to go from how Shiny was created in our first episode with Winston Chang all the way to some of the infrastructure side of things, such as with uh, Colin Fay. And now we're into the swing of the design interface. Sorry, my son is with me. Um, with um, with um, other packages that we have in the pipeline for functionality in the future. So um, be sure to uh, check out that blog post if you have interest in finding out more. So with that, I am going to hand over control to David Grangen, and we're going to walk through some of our uh, concepts together. So first, David, can you confirm that you can hear us and we can hear you? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. That's a real pleasure to be here. Great. I'm going to give you um, control to present your, your, um, your slides, and we'll, we'll go from there. All right, I, I guess you can see all my screen. Yes, we um, can. Thank you so much. Um, so why don't we um, start with telling us a bit about your background and how you got involved with Shiny and, and you know things like that. So. All right, yeah. So uh, first of all, uh, I was born in, in France uh, 28 years ago. Um, um, I'm married. I have uh, one wonderful daughter. Uh, so I'm perfectly happy uh, with uh, my life. Um, and um, I, I did um, some, my studies, uh, part of my studies in France. Uh, so I did my master's degree uh, in Lyon, uh, where I studied applied mathematics. Uh, and I, yeah, I was covering uh, a large uh, range of fields uh, such as uh, reaction, diffusion equations, differential equations. Uh, and also simulation, some statistics. Uh, and then I, I did my PhD in Paris. Um, so it was again in applied mathematics. Uh, and my PhD was about uh, a, a mo mathematical model of calcium and phosphate homeostasis. So basically uh, applied mathematics in physiology. Uh, then I moved uh, to uh, Zurich uh, with my wife. Uh, I, I found a postdoc position. Uh, and um, for my, my postdoc position, what I did uh, is I converted uh, everything I, I developed uh, during my PhD uh, to a complex Shiny app. Uh, and uh, it led me to create uh, the virtual patient simulator, which was uh, showcased uh, in the Shiny uh, contest uh, organized in February, I think, uh, and also the creation of our interface with all packages such as Shiny Dashboard Plus, BS4 Dash, Shiny F7, and a lot of uh, other uh, things. Excellent. That's a very um, interesting background, and obviously you're a brilliant scientist. Um, before we go too much further, let me remind everybody listening that if you have questions for David and myself, please feel free to add those to the to the chat panel, and we'll be sure to address those as we go forward. Um, so yeah, as I as I said, David, that's that's a great scientific background. Um, I've been hugely impressed with what you've been doing with the packages within our interface, and we'll dive into some of those shortly. I'm just curious. It looks to I me mean, they're obviously built with a lot of great principles and web design, you know, web frameworks, like great uses of CSS, JavaScript, et cetera. 
did you have those skills already before picking up Shiny, or how did you become so fluent in that? Yeah, yeah. F thanks for the question. Uh, yeah, this is uh, actually uh, the first programming language I learned uh, was JavaScript, uh, and I was uh, it was before high school, uh, and also uh, HTML. So I, I'm not so proficient with CSS, but more with HTML and JavaScript and also with uh, PHP, but I totally stopped uh, PHP right now, so I don't remember anything about that. Um, so I have kind of uh, web background uh, development also. Well, that, that's great, and it, it certainly shows with the factors we're about to talk about. So um, as we think about this in a more general sense, um, what were some of the motivations for creating the R interface kind of suite of packages? What what ideas did you want to cover with the, the various packages we're going to dive into shortly? Um, OK, so um, yeah, I, I think I, I discovered Shiny almost at the beginning. Uh, and then uh, later, uh, I started using uh, Shiny dashboard. Uh, and after uh, creating like 10, uh, 15, 20 dashboards, uh, I realized uh, they were all looking the same. Uh, I didn't have a lot of uh, customization options, uh, even though I really like uh, Shiny Dashboard. Um, and it was confirmed uh, when I started uh, the development of the virtual patient simulator. Um, so the first demonstration uh, I showed, uh, people clearly told me that uh, they expected something uh, a bit more professional. Uh, meaning that they wanted to have more uh, customiz customization regarding the style, uh, more options. They wanted to have a right sidebar, which you don't have natively in Shiny Dashboard. Um, and if you look at my uh, screen right now, you have uh, an example of uh, what I was looking for, for instance, uh, where you have uh, a complex dashboard here with a left sidebar, you have a right sidebar with several panels, uh, and in the center you have boxes uh, with some widgets, uh, advanced widgets, different colors, uh, which you don't, we, you didn't have uh, in Shiny uh, several uh, years ago. Uh, so the motivation behind that was to try to, to bring uh, more uh, customization to Shiny. Uh, another thing is that uh, Shiny Dashboard is based uh, on uh, an HTML template, which is called uh, Admin LT. Uh, and Admin LT uh, has um, two versions. Uh, actually, it has three versions, but the first one is not uh, used anymore. Uh, so the second one is currently used by Shiny Dashboard. Uh, but uh, if you look at uh, the original template, you see that you have way more components that you have in Shiny Dashboard. And I think uh, when they developed Shiny Dashboard, they wanted to have something very efficient and very simple. And uh, yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah, this is uh, one of the motivation uh, behind uh, Shiny Dashboard Plus, uh, like bringing uh, more components uh, to Shiny Dashboard. Um, then you have uh, another version uh, of uh, Admin LT, which is Admin LT3 based on Bootstrap 4. Um, so now uh, a lot of Shiny templates uh, are still based uh, on Bootstrap 3 uh, because Shiny does not natively support Bootstrap 4 uh, for the moment. Uh, but uh, the, the idea behind uh, BS4 Dash was to try to provide uh, a Bootstrap 4 version uh, of Shiny Dashboard. Uh, and finally, um, after uh, several uh, years of development, uh, so I was not 100% of my time uh, developing these packages. It was several, uh, several times uh, during the week. Uh, and I, I came up with uh, different packages, as you can see in my screen, like Shane Dashboard Plus, PS4 Dash, Argon, Argon Dash, uh, Tableau Dash, uh, and also uh, other uh, collaborators brought me packages, uh, especially John Kuhn, my colleague from, uh, which is also part of our interface, uh, based on Geneva, uh, who developed Shiny Bulma on full page. And all together, uh, yeah, uh, we had a discussion with John uh, last year, uh, end of November, and he, he told me why not creating uh, like a kind of big project where you put all these packages together. 
uh, and this is how uh, end of November uh, I, I created our interface. Uh, so I spent some time finding the name and uh, I've also created the website. Um, yeah, for the, for the story. Um, now I guess uh, maybe you have some questions uh, or yeah. I can uh, go yeah, to uh, the demonstration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just a couple more points I want to mention. Um, I mean, yep. this is a little kind of story time of Eric here, but um, I remember vividly um, at our studio conf earlier this year, I was walking to a, a dinner with uh, Winston Chang, who of course we had on episode one, um, and Jonathan City, and, and, and Winston was kind of telling me, I mean, maybe you won't like me saying this, but that he was hoping that we could have a point where not all the shiny applications out in the community look the same in a sense. And so I feel like our interface is like the ticket to start giving your applications a new look to them. And with the features that, as you pointed to early on, that customers that you may be developing these applications for are used to a more, I, I hate to say, maybe professional look or a slightly different take on the UI. But the fact that you've assembled all these in kind of this logical grouping of these packages, it gives all of us a great set of tools to start with. And one thing I'll, as we'll go through these demos is I'd love to get your take on the use cases of, a, of choosing, say, a Shiny Dashboard Plus versus a BS4 Dash or some of the other packages. So I'm really excited to see where this is going for sure. But yeah, let's dive into um, some of your take on, for example, Shiny Dashboard Plus. All right, yeah. Uh, just before starting, just to complete what you said, uh, yeah, before developing these packages, I, I spent a lot of time reviewing uh, HTML templates on the web, uh, trying to find something um, so that all uh, templates are, are different, you know, because if I uh, take all templates uh, and I just integrate them uh, like a machine, and I, I, I don't think about that, maybe all templates will look the same and I, I didn't want that. Um, so to, to start with uh, Shiny Dashboard Plus, um, what you can see here uh, is just uh, an iframe uh, of Shiny Dashboard application, uh, which is uh, integrated into my presentation. And uh, the difference uh, with, uh, so what you have is a sidebar, a left sidebar. Uh, you have uh, the navigation bar, which contains uh, several elements. Uh, and here uh, on the right side, you have uh, the right sidebar, which you don't have uh, in Shiny. You didn't have uh, in Shiny dashboard uh, until now. Actually, it was hidden uh, in the dependencies. Um, so uh, I think it's interesting here because uh, when I develop Shiny apps, uh, I like putting uh, the navigation uh, on the left sidebar. Uh, and putting inputs uh, on the right sidebar. Uh, and you see in the right sidebar, you have several uh, tabs uh, in which you can organize your inputs. Uh, I recommend using uh, until uh, three tabs, otherwise it's too much tabs. It doesn't render uh, properly. Um, so another difference uh, is that when you collapse uh, the left sidebar, then you can still see icons. Uh, and when you hover on the, those icons, then you have uh, the name of uh, the section. Um, in the navigation bar, what you have uh, is uh, here uh, a panel, a user panel. Uh, you have, you still have a notification, which you have at uh, Shiny Dashboard. Um, you have some drop-down menus you can put on, on the left side uh, of the navigation bar. Uh, which was not possible with uh, Shiny Dashboard. Um, so yeah, here you can see that uh, in this demonstration, you have uh, the skeleton of the app. So you see that I load Shiny, Shiny Dashboard. Uh, I should also load Shiny Dashboard Plus here. Uh, and uh, I just replace the Dashboard page by Dashboard Page Plus to integrate more elements like uh, the, the right sidebar. Uh, I have a dashboard header plus that uh, allows me to integrate a bit more components. Um, so yeah, if you are interested to, to have more details about all these components, you can go to the help section of the package, which is uh, uh, on GitHub. Uh, 
So here is the improved header already mentioned. Um, what you have in Chain Dashboard Plus is uh, some improved uh, boxes, which are called Box Plus. Um, so this Box Plus, uh, what you have, uh, you can still collapse or uncollapse the box, but you can also close the box, uh, which is which might be useful in some cases. Uh, you also have uh, drop-down menus, uh, which you can activate. You can also display labels, uh, which might be useful in case you have dynamic elements inside your apps and you want to count uh, these elements. Uh, that might be interesting to, to display uh, this kind of uh, information. Uh, here you have a gradient box. Um, you have some widget boxes, uh, like social boxes, uh, yeah, that can be useful if you are doing uh, some uh, Facebook um, application or something like that. Uh, so you have different styles. Um, another social box and an experimental um, stuff here called uh, the flip box. Uh, the flip box, uh, what you do if you, you click uh, on the button, then you can flip the box. So you have a kind of two dimensions. You have the front part and you have the back part. Uh, in case you want to save space, you want to display uh, other information. Um, here you have also box elements, like uh, you can display a sidebar in the box. Uh, so here, for, for instance, I can put uh, inputs in this sidebar, uh, but you can also show some help, uh, help section. Uh, here you have some uh, statistic uh, items uh, in case you are displaying, like you are doing some uh, application uh, with uh, statistical data or whatever. Um, some here it's a box path in which you can also organize uh, some results uh, to highlight them. Uh, you have user list here, uh, nav pills. Uh, here it's a product list, but it could be. Uh, anything actually it's uh, just a list uh, you have accordions um, so collapsible uh, items uh, to-do lists which you can also move um, and uh, I, I think uh, the component i like the most is the timeline uh, the timeline here uh, which is useful in case uh, for instance you are working in pharma company uh, if you if you are in interested in following some events, uh, that's nice to have this kind of timeline. Um, so yeah, overall, this is um, all what Shiny Dashboard Plus bring. Uh, so you still have uh, also other elements. Uh, but what is important is that it's totally compatible with Shiny Dashboard. It's not that you replace Shiny Dashboard Plus, uh, Shiny Dashboard by Shiny Dashboard Plus. It's just an extension that's that's important. Uh, I agree with I you totally. Yeah, I just want to interject here to highlight that when I've used Shiny Dashboard Plus and some production apps at, at the day job, the biggest hits for a lot of our customers are the fact that you highlighted earlier about how the boxes can have a, a right sidebar and like I said, that optional drop down menu and just the right sidebar itself. I mean, these are might look like little things if you're still new, kind of new to this, but all these features really add up to give this more comprehensive and hopefully a smoother UI experience that you might not get with some of the, the other functionality and some of the basic uh, packages. So again, I just want to say kudos to Shiny Dashboard Plus because this has been arguably one of the most popular packages that we've been using uh, internally to make really nice looking web applications. So we are very big, very big fans of that. Um, so yeah, I, I invite the listeners to check out the Shiny Dashboard Plus repo for this demo and a lot more details on that. But I think this is a good segue to say, okay, now there is Shiny Dashboard Plus, but you also have another very influential package that I've been using as well called BS4 Dash. Maybe you could start talking about some of the differences between the two there. Yeah, what's interesting is that uh, we can do the direct comparison because uh, Shiny Dashboard is based, as I told you, on uh, a bootstrap for uh, HTML dashboard template. Uh, and PS4 Dash is based uh, on the same HTML template, but with Bootstrap 4. Uh, all right, so uh, yeah, what I 
want it with Shender, uh, with BS4 Dash uh, is to have uh, to keep the spirit of uh, Shandy dashboard. Uh, so you still have uh, here uh, the left sidebar, uh, but you, you notice that there is a difference in the style, uh, like a refreshment, an important refreshment. Uh, you can have a dark background, you have a light background. So here it's a light background, but it's definitely something you can change. Um, you have uh, a right sidebar here, which is uh, which has a a white background, but again, you can uh, put a, a dark background if you want, and you can even have uh, like tabs as well. But here, you don't have anything uh, in this demonstration. Uh, and in the header, uh, same thing. You can customize the color uh, as you want. So you have a lot of uh, different colors, which are a part of Bootstrap 4. Uh, I think more than 10. So you have a lot of choice. Uh, if we look at what we have here, we have uh, same thing as in Chain Dashboard. We have uh, boxes uh, here with a solid header. Uh, you have label inside drop down menus. Uh, you can close uh, the box also if you want. Uh, here you have a box with gradient color. Uh, here the box uh, in which you change uh, header property, uh, which I really like. Uh, and something which is uh, new to uh, PS4 Dash uh, and you don't have uh, in Shiny Dashboard and a lot of people wanted these features uh, is uh, a maximizable card. So if you uh, increase the size of this card, you can uh, display uh, the card uh, full screen, uh, which, which is interesting in case um, yeah, you want to focus on some specific content uh, in your app. Oh, yeah, so I just still... got to say, this is a huge feature. I'm really excited for this because we'll often have a lot of collection of outputs or boxes containing either plots or tables. And sometimes the audience or the customer is like, wait, 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 show me more about that one. And we just simply expand this out and we can dive into a much more higher resolution. So really glad to see that. And I, I'm very grateful to uh, the maintainers of the original HTML template because they do an amazing job. Uh, they had amazing features. Uh, and yeah, I just remind that uh, I don't create a template. Uh, I just adapt uh, HTML template to R. That's different because creating that kind of template takes way more time yeah, and is way more complex. Uh, so here you have, uh, user cards similar to what you have in Chain Dashboard uh, with a bootstrap for refreshment. Uh, and here you, you notice that you have uh, elevation on the card. You have a shadow uh, which you don't have uh, natively uh, in Chain Dashboard. And here you can put some shadow around several components. Um, here you have uh, some collapsible elements in which you can nest uh, pictures, you can have text. Uh, you can even have labels or whatever you want, actually. Uh, here is just an example. Uh, you have some profile box here. You can even create a uh, chat. Uh, you have uh, something I also really like uh, is tabs cards. Uh, so these tabs cards are just cards with tabs. Uh, and you can also enlarge them, uh, which is uh, a nice feature. Uh, but you can also uh, have these tab set panels which are outside cards. Uh, it, might, it might be useful. Uh, and you have a lot of uh, options. You have uh, vertical tabs, you have horizontal tabs, uh, you can change the color, you can, uh, yeah, you have a lot of different options you can explore uh, on BS4 Dash uh, page. Uh, you can even sort uh, components. Um, let's say, yeah, people want to reorganize the interface, which I don't uh, recommend, but uh, in some occasion, uh, that's uh, necessary. Uh, and here you find the same component as uh, in Chain Dashboard, uh, like uh, description block, uh, box write path. Uh, you have value boxes uh, and info boxes, uh, which are really nice uh, in the Bootstrap for design. Uh, and finally, you also have uh, sub items, uh, and here you have uh, collapsibles, uh, accordions, you have vertical progress bars, uh, the timeline component, uh, which is also here my favorite, uh, and also some, uh, some other useful functions, uh, which I will not mention here. 
Um, so this is uh, what I wanted to mention uh, for BS4 Dash. So I, I think it's pretty clear uh, if I if I go back uh, that uh, yeah you have uh, kind of uh, a more modern interface, but you don't lose the spirit of uh, Shine Dashboard. Yeah, that's some I'm, I'm really happy to see is that BS4 Dash, yeah, like you said, has a nice modern looking UI to this, but you're seeing a lot of those similar components being ported over here, along with some new ones too. Like for example, the alerts and the carousels and much of the other things you mentioned. This is all great to have at your disposal as you're thinking about architecting a more intuitive user interface for your, for your customers when you're making shiny apps. So one thing that I notice as I get questions a lot and we get some questions during this webinar is what's the what's the idea of when you create a shiny app and you use either something like these packages or maybe some other ones for mobile interfaces? What are some of the things you're thinking about in terms of addressing an app, maybe creating an app that's more optimized for that typical mobile phone view or tablet view? Okay, so um, I, I guess uh, shiny dashboard uh, on BS4 Dash are uh, kind of optimized for for mobiles, uh, meaning that you know if you uh, reduce the, the size of your screen, uh, then uh, the content is responsive. Uh, but you have some components which are not really, uh, which are uh, kind of exception. And in that case, what I do uh, is I create uh, custom inputs, um, which uh, take, for instance, the size uh, of my screen. So I calculate the size of my screen uh, with the JavaScript function. Uh, I record uh, this variable into a shiny input. Uh, and then uh, based on that new shiny input, I can generate uh, the interface on the server side. Uh, but I, I, I think uh, from what you have here, uh, you don't have a lot of uh, things to, to do for to make sure that it works on mobiles. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly, you can do only as much, but now we can get to some of the newer efforts you've been doing in terms of what is a, a great way to, um, maybe if you have mobile focus first, what are some of the things that uh, and you and our interface have been working on for that? And by the way, I'll, I'll just mention that what David's showing here is a virtual patient simulator that he referenced earlier. And obviously we don't have too much time to dive into it here, but this was part of um, David's shiny contest submission. And we'll have a link that we send out to all the details on how you made this application um, after the webinar. Yeah, here it's just to illustrate how BS4 Dash behave uh, on yep. mobiles. Uh, you see here, uh, I almost don't have anything to do. Uh, you see cards, uh, feet. Uh, you can uh, display components here, uh, collapsible elements. Uh, and yeah, for some very little details, I have to rescale the size uh, to make the text a bit bigger. Uh, but that's it. Yeah, you don't have so much to do. Uh, and yeah, because we are talking uh, about mobiles, uh, I can show you uh, a package I'm working on uh, on the R interface project. Uh, so I started working on that. Uh, actually, I don't remember. Uh, maybe last year. Uh, and uh, same thing. Uh, I don't have so much free time to 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 spend on that. So it's very. Uh, I spent some time that this week uh, and some months ago. But uh, yeah, in between, I don't have so much free time. Um, so here, uh, the idea uh, behind that uh, is to try to find uh, some alternatives, uh, or not really alternatives, but uh, to bring some refreshment uh, to the mini UI package. Uh, so uh, if you don't know mini UI, mini UI is useful if you want to build uh, shiny gadgets. Uh, you can even build shiny apps with mini UI, uh, even though these apps uh, are better uh, for uh, mobile. So. Uh, I, I think it's better to 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 build uh, a, shine, uh, a dashboard with shiny dashboard than uh, using uh, this kind of template. Uh, and here it's based uh, on an HTML template which is called uh, Framework 7. Uh, and Framework 7 uh, brings a template for 
material design, so for Android, uh, for iOS, and also for desktop. Uh, what you see here uh, is our uh, adaptation I did, uh, which is called uh, Shiny F7. Uh, and yeah, it's very similar to Mini UI. Uh, and uh, here you can see that you have a bit uh, kind of extension. Uh, so in Mini UI, you don't have uh, these uh, panels here. Uh, so you have a left and a right panel. You can uh, customize their background color. You have dedicated inputs. Uh, it's super important to say that uh, shiny native shiny input uh, don't work uh, with this template. Uh, so I was obliged to re-implement uh, all text inputs, uh, numeric inputs, slider inputs uh, to use uh, these uh, dedicated inputs. And this is how they look like. Uh, here is for uh, iOS. Uh, so you have a text input, you have um, here a slider range, but you can have like a basic slider input. Uh, you have a stepper input, which is kind of numeric input. Uh, so here you can uh, you can do that. You have a checkbox uh, input. You have a checkbox group uh, here. Uh, you have a radio. Uh, so you can see that's so different from what you have in Shiny. Uh, and that's interesting uh, for that reason, because the design uh, is uh, really interesting. Um, here you have a toggle. Uh, and finally, here it's a select uh, input. Um, you have also other uh, components, uh, such as uh, here you have action buttons. Uh, what I really like is that you can gather them uh, in uh, nice containers. Uh, and yeah, if we click uh, on the first but, uh, yellow button, then uh, if you look at the first uh, input, you see if I click, uh, it's incremented. Uh, so all these inputs uh, really work as uh, shiny action buttons. Um, you also have uh, like uh, input containers uh, for, for buttons, uh, classic, uh, classic buttons. Uh, here, these are cards. Uh, you have card with no header, no footer, uh, card with uh, images, um, social cards, media cards, list cards. You even have what I really like is the expandable cards. Uh, you can, it's very similar what you have uh, in the App Store. Uh, in the App Store, you have these kind of expandable cards. Um, yeah, so this is uh, a nice feature from, from, from this package. Uh, you have text containers. Uh, here are some pop-ups. Uh, yeah, you have, uh, it's very uh, like, a, it really looks like a native app. Uh, you have sweeper here. Um, so in case you wanna display uh, several plots, you even have timeline. Um, you have a progress, uh, gauges, uh, and yeah, this week I, I was working on my free time uh, on a new update, uh, which was successfully merged uh, during this afternoon, and I will release it, um, I will update the demonstration uh, very soon. But uh, I'm really excited about this package because uh, it's interesting to develop, uh, and the output is also uh, promising. Uh, I must say, this is, this is simply amazing uh, to see where it's gone thus far, even with the free time or little free time you've had to put this together. And we're really looking forward to seeing where this progresses as well. Um, we're, I know we're getting near our time, but I want to I want to make sure we have time to address some questions. So why don't we um, wrap up uh, our conversation with kind of what's next for you and the rest of the um, our interface project. And yeah, this is a great little teaser for for this one, uh, Taylor Dash, why don't you tell us a bit about this? Yeah, so um, uh, the next plan is, uh, you know, I have a lot of, uh, it's like, a, it's a bit like a trap, you know, uh, I develop uh, a lot of templates uh, and now I have to maintain them. Uh, and it's also very interesting to, to do that job because it means that uh, I can practice uh, yeah, all the time uh, around Shiny. Uh, so I have to improve these packages to address issues. Uh, and above all, uh, what is uh, really uh, crucial is to provide 
uh, the best documentation as possible. And currently, uh, I have to say, uh, I have to improve the documentation uh, because it takes time. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is something that will be done uh, with time. Yeah. Uh, here you see, uh, which is uh, the latest dashboard template uh, I developed, which was also, also showcased uh, in the shiny uh, shiny uh, contest. Uh, it's a Pokemon app, and here what I find interesting is that uh, you don't really uh, realize uh, it's a shiny app, uh, like a native shiny app. Uh, and yeah, this is uh, something I really wanted to bring uh, to the community. Um, I have um, new packages which are not uh, currently uh, public, uh, so it's still a secret. Uh, I will uh, reveal them uh, probably next year. Um, and I have some plans regarding um, yeah, participating uh, in, uh, in some uh, conferences like use R. Uh, so I was in use R uh, this year uh, on Saturdays, uh, organizing workshops, uh, meetups, uh, and also the R Studio conference, uh, for instance. Um, and I, I also would like uh, now to, to spend some time um, yeah, like producing um, some videos uh, to explain people how we, they can use these packages uh, in detail, uh, which is not really convenient to do for a presentation or for uh, just like a static uh, website. Um, and finally, uh, I, I'm really open to, to collaboration because, uh, yeah, as I told you, uh, I'm really busy with my work. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I joined Novartis um, two months ago already. Uh, I'm doing a lot of shiny uh, every day. Uh, that's really uh, what I wanted, uh, but I, I have less free time uh, and I'm really open to, to collaboration. Uh, so if you just want to help uh, regarding the documentation, just um, because, you know, sometimes you have like a typo in the documentation and you might think uh, it's not useful to correct this typo, but actually that's super useful because all these little things together takes a crazy amount of time. Uh, so, yeah, I'm totally open to, to suggestion, to collaboration. And I, I think that's it, yeah. Uh, excellent, David. And um, I'll just mention, I'm, again, super appreciative of all the time you spent on these packages. And you've seen that I put a couple issues on, say, the BS4 Dash issue tracker or some ideas, and you've always been very receptive to those. So we are we're super excited to see where those go. Um, so yeah, we do have a couple of questions online. I'm going to ask those with you now, David. Um, first question is um, with the, the packages such as Shiny Dashboard Plus or BS4 Dash, and in essence, shiny with dashboards what are some of the advantages of creating those over something like that's offered in microsoft power bi dashboards now i personally don't have experience with microsoft power bi i'm not sure if you do either okay so yeah if i understood correctly um yeah the question is whether i want to develop some microsoft based uh, dashboard right well, it's more about do you. What are the advantages of a Shiny-based dashboard over, in your opinion, over a Microsoft BI dashboard? Uh, I, I never used, uh, you know, the Microsoft uh, dashboard you mentioned, uh, so I don't really know. Uh, yeah. You're yeah. in the same boat I am, so that may be something we take over to the uh, RStudio community post um, after this episode, and we'll let others chime into that. We, both you and me, are I think mostly shiny users, so we don't have as much experience with that. Um, so yeah, so another question was, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, but you did show how some of the packages or things like Shiny Dashboard Plus and BS4 Dash look in the mobile view in that great um, yeah. sharing you were doing. Um, yeah. Under the hood, is this still using kind of that same 12 column layout that we're used to in like the bootstrap kind of styling or do things get different when you look at that view? That's that's another question. In, in BS4 Dash, you still have, uh, you know, the fluid row uh, and the column uh, components. So you have um, the maximum width, which is 12. 
Uh, and if you create like um, you have, um, I don't know, you have. Um, maybe we can we can open uh, uh, the demonstration um, here. Uh, let's say you have uh, info boxes or value boxes uh, and you want to display them side by side. Uh, what you do under the hood uh, is uh, just creating a row uh, and you put all these boxes uh, in columns. So here you have uh, each box has a width which is three because uh, yeah, if you multiply by four, you find 12. Uh, if you want to have uh, three boxes, uh, the maximum width will be four. Uh, and yeah, you still have to, to respect that. Um, and to be honest, uh, I didn't explore um, a lot of other options uh, because in Shiny, you have the flow layout, for instance. Uh, and I, I didn't explore that uh, with PS4 Dash. Uh, so that would be something uh, interesting to, to integrate uh, probably, yeah. Sure, and um, I'll just mention when I create apps with BS4 Dash or Shiny Dashboard Plus, um, I just use the same concepts I did with the traditional Shiny app. I will do a bunch of fluid rows and then I'll customize a column width within each and then I'll put in the elements inside and I'll tweak that. But it's nice that those skills, in my opinion, translate well to using any of these packages as well. Um, good, so we got a couple more to wrap up here. Um, you. Yeah. Do you have any um, ideas about the future looks like specifically for BS4 Dash as you continue development on that? Um, yeah, I have. Um, you know, um, when I when I started developing BS4 Dash, uh, I, I made a mistake. Uh, I wanted to have a package which is different from uh, Shiny Dashboard. Uh, and it's a mistake because what people want is just replacing uh, Shiny Dashboard library, Shiny Dashboard by library, BS4 Dash, and that's it. Uh, this was not possible until uh, the last uh, release. And in the last release, uh, I, I created uh, several uh, aliases, uh, which makes uh, BS4 Dash functions uh, yeah, you have aliases uh, for uh, Shiny Dashboard uh, classic functions, uh, meaning that if you have to convert from uh, BS4 Dash to Shiny Dashboard, uh, from Shiny Dashboard to BS4 Dash, you spend uh, less time than before. Uh, however, you still have some uh, parameters, uh, function parameters, which are in BS4 Dash and not on uh, Shiny Dashboard. Uh, and I still have to think uh, how to solve this problem to to kind of bring uh, a one-to-one -one, uh, translation. Well, that certainly does not sound like an easy task. So we definitely, um, hope, I'm sure that's going to take a, a lot of thought and consideration into that. Um, let's see, one, I think we'll have time for one more before we have to wrap up. Um, there was a question about is our interface or your work, are you interested in working on dashboards that can be incorporated in something like Flex Dashboard? Or is this more focused on particular Shiny apps? Um, so, um, yeah, to be honest, I'm way more, uh, you know, I, wear, I I don't have so much. Uh, I'm not really an expert about uh, our markdown or, um, yeah, any, any stuff like that. So, uh, if I have to, to, to provide some um, design for, for these uh, approaches uh, using uh, our markdown like Flex Dashboard, uh, I would have to, to spend some time uh, on the background uh, behind, uh, behind that. Sure, yeah, well understood. So, um, yep. Why not? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I was gonna say that, that's certainly another endeavor in itself. Um, so I know we're running pretty well on time here. So I will um, definitely want to thank you again, David, for showing us this great overview of the, the really awesome capabilities of the packages within the R interface a suite of, of UIs. And I also mentioned to our listeners that on top of having this webinar recorded, we will also um, do a, a more hands-on demonstration later on. We don't know exact timing yet 
for David and I will dive into maybe, maybe one or more of these packages in greater detail and show some of the ideas that you have if you want to start developing an application with one of these packages. Um, so I'm going to um, take over presentation for a second and then I'll kind of wrap up here. Um, let's see, get that going here. And David, while I'm doing that, any other closing thoughts you have for the listeners before we wrap up? Yeah, just wanted to say hi to to my French uh, colleagues. Uh, so from um, Think R, from uh, R Data, uh, from Dream R, uh, and I guess a lot of them are already uh, in the Shiny Dev series. Uh, and also to my uh, colleague uh, John Kuhn, uh, which is uh, who is part of uh, our interface. Um, and I, I'm really uh, I'm really happy uh, about how it went. Uh, if you think uh, about that, uh, two years ago uh, there was nothing, and now we still, uh, yeah, we have kind of some some nice packages. Yeah, it's a great story on how all this uh, come to be, and I, yeah, I've been a big fan of all of your work. In fact, uh, John's recent package to show kind of like a splash loading screen when your app shows up. That's already been winning a lot of points of my customers instead of seeing a web page that just kind of stalls until something just magically appears. I have this nice little loading screen so they know something's happening. So don't close the window and then they can just, you know, be patient. But little things like that, as I mentioned earlier, really add up to the user experience that we're trying to enhance with our shiny apps and specifically the UIs around that. So yeah, I'm really impressed with the technical capabilities that y'all are bringing with this. Um, so yeah, um, to wrap things up here, we will have um, our next edition of the Shiny Developer Series uh, webinar version um, in September 13th. We will welcome Nick Strayer to talk about his Shiny Sense package and custom JavaScript visualizations. And that'll be a lot of fun to talk with. And if you have, and as I mentioned earlier, we will have a post on the RStudio community portal. And hopefully you're all members of that, but if not, it's at community.rstudio.com. We have a specific tag for the Shiny Dev series. And you can see we have our first three episodes on discussion threads. We've had great feedback from all of you on each of these, and we're engaged, We're trying to engage as best we can to answer questions you have after the webinar. Um, and if you have general comments on the webinar, uh, on the Shiny Developer Series itself, um, the best place to go is the shiny, shinydevseries.com, and we have a contact uh, page. Um, this is relatively newer, but you'll never guess what powers this contact form. Aha, shiny, of course. And also, this is a little tidbit here, the infrastructure of this app is powered by the Golem package, which was, of course, highlighted by Colin Fay in, in, um, in our recent episode, episode two of the Shiny Dev series. And a shout out to Colin and his team because they just had their first CRAN release of the Golan package. And I'm just my big congratulations to Colin and the rest of the team at Thinkar for that amazing milestone. And obviously, David, from your side, uh, BS4 Dash was just updated on CRAN. So congrats to you on getting the new version of BS4 Dash out there as well. Um, so, OK, I think we will wrap up this edition of the Shiny Developer Series. We certainly Hope that you stay engaged with us on the aforementioned RStudio community portal. And as I mentioned, feels free to send feedback to myself or Curtis. We are both active on Twitter and also through the contact form on the Shiny Dev Series site. Um, we definitely want to keep this webinar going and make it as best as we can, we can make it. So we're going to wrap up there. Thanks a lot for joining, everybody. We'll see you back here in September. <laughs>